Hi there, this is CliffJumper24. I've been brooding on making this video for several weeks now, and although I'm afraid it's a bit of a rant, it just had to be said. A few days into the Olympic Games, a cyclist was killed by a bus just outside the Olympic Park. Daniel Harris was knocked off his bike by a left-turning bus. Exactly what happened is yet to be revealed, but it appears that crush injuries were the cause. But the following day, the news media were pushing the idea that maybe it was worth making cycle helmets compulsory. In fact, in this case the cyclist was wearing a helmet, something his family were at pains to point out on the days after his death. The thing about it is, the idea of compulsory helmets is simply blaming the cyclist for being run over. It's like blaming a rape victim for wearing a short skirt. Surely the question should be, how can we avoid cyclists being hit by vehicles, not how protected will they be when they get knocked off their bike? And of course, Cycle helmets have a limited range of protection. They're only designed for low speed impacts of around 15 miles an hour. They certainly offer no protection from crush injuries, blunt force trauma, damage to limbs, or a broken back or neck. Now, personally, I do wear a helmet. Two years ago, I swerved to avoid a collision on a roundabout and came off my bike. I ended up lying on my back. I didn't bump my head, but I was close to doing so. That was when I decided to buy a helmet just in case. Mainly though, I use it for mounting my camera and lights. Mounting the lights on my helmet has made my smidzy count go down no end. Where I look, I'm flashing the lights. It works wonders on roundabouts where front facing lights may not be noticed from the side. With the helmet lights pointing towards a motorist about to enter a roundabout or from a side street about to enter on a main road, it usually gets noticed. Oh, and if you think I'm likely to dazzle motorists? I've mounted them just so that in my natural posture I'm pointing the lights just below the driver's window, so it's not in their face. But I always try to make eye contact. If they don't look at me, I can't be sure if they've seen me or not. So if I feel they might dangerously pull out in front of me, all I have to do is raise my head slightly and I'm flushing the lights in their face. Now that might sound a little, a bit, a little obnoxious. I don't mean to be obnoxious, it's not, uh, that's not my intention. But I'm not protected by a metal cage and airbags, so I'd rather them be a little bit dazzled than me flying over the front of their car. So let's use such an instance to demonstrate the point of this video. A cyclist is going round a roundabout. A car's approaching the roundabout, but the driver only takes a short glimpse to the right. Unfortunately, because he was only looking for cars, he didn't notice the cyclist. So the car enters the roundabout right in front of the cyclist who can't react quickly enough and it hits the front wing of the car. He's launched over the front of the car, hitting his head as he comes down on the other side. So this cyclist wasn't wearing a helmet, and he ends up in hospital with head trauma. Whose fault is that? Well, is it the cyclist's fault for not wearing a helmet? Wearing one may have prevented head trauma, but the collision could have, broke, could have resulted in a broken neck. A helmet wouldn't have done anything to prevent that. If it was a broken neck, would the media have mentioned the cyclist wasn't wearing a helmet? The whole idea of compulsory helmets is evading the real problem. Cyclists just aren't treated as valid road users. They're treated as second class citizens of the road and they're given little respect. All the time I see comments on YouTube videos saying cyclists should pay road tax and they all jump red lights and ride on, ride on pavements. Well let's start with the road tax. Let's ignore the pedantic fact that it doesn't really exist and that it's more accurately vehicle excise duty. It's more, if anything, it's more of a phrase in the same way that an iPod isn't necessarily an Apple product or your Hoover was made from any of a dozen companies. Um, but in this instance, road tax will do. The thing is, the charge motorists pay as a tax, it's a tax on emissions. It's nothing to do with using the road. An equivalent would be smokers claiming they got more right to the NHS because they pay a lot of tax on their cigarettes. Paying more tax than a cyclist doesn't give a car more right to the road, any more than an articulated lorry had more rights to a car because they pay a lot more road tax than a car does. There's about 3 million people driving around perfectly legally not paying road tax. Cars under 100 grams of carbon dioxide per kilometre pay nothing, new cars under 300 grams pay nothing for the first year. Um, emergency vehicles, military vehicles, diplomatic vehicles, heritage vehicles over 1973, um, disabled drivers, tractors, 
they all pay nothing. A Prius takes up as much room as a as, as any as a BMW, um, but it doesn't pay any road tax. Does that mean it doesn't have right to the road? If, you, if you're going to worry about someone not paying road tax, worry about the estimated two million drivers who have no road tax insurance or um, or a license. You know they're the ones that got banned for drink driving or something like that. They're the ones that bump up your insurance premium. And if they hit your car, bye bye, no claims. On top of that, there's about 1,200 claims of whiplash injury every day. Then you've got the jumping red lights and running on pavement remarks. Now it's true, there are far too many cyclists that do this. I don't do these things and I criticise other cyclists for doing it. Cyclists jumping red lights is practically a form of Darwinism. They're a greater danger to themselves than other people. Not that that makes it any better. Riding on pavements isn't as dangerous as you might think, although uh, around a dozen pedestrians are killed by cyclists every decade. By the way, that's every decade. Now you compare that with 120 pedestrians are killed by vehicles mounting the pavement every year. You know, again, it doesn't make any better, it doesn't excuse cyclists in any way. For every cyclist jumping a red light or riding in a pavement, it's an opportunity for a selfish driver to claim the moral high ground as if two wrongs make a right. I've seen far more motorists jump red lights than cyclists, so, mo so motorists can hardly be absolved on the red light jumping front. I live near a dual carriageway and there's a, lot of, uh, a number of young lads who drive sporty hatchbacks and they're regularly using it as a racetrack. Do you think it would be fair to make sweeping statements about all motorists based upon their behaviour? Of course not. Cyclists not paying road tax, MOT insurance, etc., riding on pavements, jumping red lies, none of this is relevant. It's no different than a racial epithet or calling someone gay. It's just a disguise to hide a prejudice to all cyclists by people who are just too selfish to share. A number of the comments have even accused cyclists of uh, carrying cameras uh, that they're going looking for trouble. Anyone saying this is crazy. Do they really think a cyclist would risk injury or death? because it'll look good on YouTube. In fact, the reason uh, more and more cyclists are carrying them is because if if a cyclist is hit by a car, the driver could claim the cyclist jumped a red light or rode or was came off the pavement. And without a third party witness, it's your word against theirs. The camera merely shows what's happening from the cyclist's point of view. Uh, I'm not sure if it's just me, but I've noticed this change in motorist mentality in the last few years. It seems like the glass ceiling of patience has been smashed because there's so many cars on the road, people just don't think enough about what damage they could do. They just act, act on instinct and they just go for it. Uh, an example is a large roundabout which I regularly use. Until recently, um, if I was on a roundabout, vehicles waiting to rent to it would wait until my back wheel has passed before revving up their engine and moving on. Now it seems that they're revving it just before I'm about to pass in front of them and moving off close behind my back wheel. About eight years ago on that same roundabout, I once ran over an 8 inch screw at about 18 to 20 miles an hour. It was flicked up by my front wheel, bounced off my frame and went through my back tyre, jammed up on the frame. In less than a car's length I went from doing 18 miles an hour to zero. Fortunately it happened between the exit off the roundabout and the entrance onto it and I screeched to a safe halt. Imagine today if that screw was lying on the road just before the round, roundabout entrance. And this is just isn't happening to me. There are thousands of cycling videos on YouTube, and it shows that this is an everyday problem for cyclists. Drivers regularly pass a bit closer than they really should, but these are little annoyances that don't even get put up. The majority of the videos that end up on YouTube vary from the worrying eyebrow raising ones to the downright dangerous ones. I consider myself very lucky, I've been riding on the road for t over 25 years and I've never been in a collision. I've had a lot of close calls, but nothing so far. But these close calls are getting ever more frequent and I'm starting to worry that one of these days I may end up getting hurt. Like the cycle helmet, that's why I've now got the camera, just in case. In conclusion, I just want to get this message out. To any motorists listening, all cyclists want is a little bit of patience and a little bit of space. If you remember anything, remember this. If you clip another car, it's a bit of pain and an insurance claim. If you clip a cyclist, you could kill them. All to save a few seconds. Take it easy. Bye bye.